guys, I'm here and I'm back, you guys. You guys already know, my name is Sarah. If you don't know, now you know. So I hope the lighting's okay. Let me check, it's okay. So I have some questions that, um, that have been asked. I have a total of seven questions. This may be a two-part video, I don't know, because I can like start talking and just not stopping. So if it says part one, then obviously there's gonna be a part two, but I'm trying to get through this as quick as possible. There are, the questions are on uh, many different topics, so, but they're associated with the aesthetics business. So if you want to know the answers to those, stay tuned. And just know that when I answer these questions, these are strictly and solely my opinion. This is not anything, like I, I could be wrong, who knows, but this is, ha this is what has worked for me and my business. So that's all I can say and that's what I'm giving you guys advice on. So the first question, and that's why I'm going to be looking at my phone. The first question is, working from home versus renting space out to do business or traveling to clients' homes. I'm not exactly sure what the question is exactly that, but I'm going to try to like figure it out. So, working from home is better than renting a space anywhere unless you're just starting out and you need clients, I would say, because some businesses already have that established clientele. And so, for example, if you do lashes and you're the only person that does lashes there, everybody else that's there is more than likely going to recommend you to their clients to get their lashes done. So that's like the pro with working at a business, but the con is you're paying booth rent every week or every, every month, however you guys decide that you guys are gonna get that done. As far as traveling to clients, I will never do that, especially for lashes, because if you don't know and you are thinking about doing lashes, the humidity in your environment have a lot to do with your adhesive. Adhesive is glue. So if you're gonna be traveling to all these different environments, you never know what your client's environment is going to be like when you get inside of their house. They may have high humidity and it may not work well with your glue, which means their retention is gonna suck. You just never know. You never know what it's gonna be, so that's just something that I wouldn't chance doing. Um, people do it, and I'm sure you can find a glue out there that doesn't really matter with the humidity, but the majority of them, they do. So, second question, do you still do all esthetician services for your clients, or did you start just specializing in one or two things, like eyebrows and lashes? I see that a lot out here. I perform all aesthetic-related services on my clients, with the exception of lash lifts. I don't really believe in lash lifts. I don't really like them. I know how to do them. I've done them before. I just don't really like doing them. I feel like they don't give the clients the results. I feel like extensions is better. But if you have super long lashes and you think that that's the best thing to do, then you may be a good candidate. I just don't offer that service. But the services I do offer are microdermabrasion, uh, fa regular facial services, chemical pills, body waxing, not full body waxing, I don't offer legs or anything like that. Um, I have added a few things to my menu um, for some clients, but I won't like, you know, I don't know, I just don't really like doing legs because I don't know why, but I can do them though. <laughs> I do lash tint, brow tint, lash extensions, and yeah, I pretty much do it all over here, so, you know. Third question is, there's a ton of advertising for further education, Further education on microblading and lash extensions. They seem to go on tours and teach people around the U.S. Are any of them scams and how long should a class or course be to get fully trained properly so we don't waste our money on the advertised ones all over Instagram? That's a good question because, like, y'all, I see this so many times. Like, it's ridiculous. So, they could be scams. I can't tell you which ones are scams. I know that you need to really, really do your research on the person that you are taking a class from. I've had a friend actually, a, another lash artist friend, take a class from somebody that was a scam. Um, totally wasted her money and stuff like that. You just need to make sure that you're doing your research. Your research. For example, I have um, somebody flying out here. Her name is Sandra. She's from Lash 411. If you guys don't know who she is and you're a lash artist, then you're wrong. You need to go look her up on Instagram. She runs Eyelash Art. I'm having her come down in August, August 20th and 21st, and she's actually going to teach and certify me. Although I'm already certified twice, I feel like her skill level, she's been doing it for five years, and her work is amazing, and she helps people all the time. She's going to come and certify me, and I'm so excited about that. I've done my research, my research and all that. I don't know why I keep messing up on the word research. But I've been to, I could have easily, you know, had somebody else teach me in Nashville and paid way cheaper and stuff like that. But for me, it's quality 
over everything. So I don't care if you're gonna be $2,000 more than this person. If you're better, I'm gonna have you come out and teach me. Like, it is what it is. That's just me, that's my personal thing. If some people can't afford that, and that's fine. But just save, save your money until you can't afford it. Don't do it. As far as, um, as far as uh, microblading is concerned, it has nothing to do with the trainer. Well, it has everything to do with you. And the reason why I'm saying that is because most of the states in the United States, you can't even microblade unless you're a tattoo artist or an apprentice. So with that being said, these trainers are coming out here and they'll still train you because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to ensure that you're able to do this by calling your state board and getting the okay, looking at rules and stuff like that. So they're gonna teach whatever. Every state is different. They may be allowed to teach in their state and blah, 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 blah. But for example, me, I was offered a position with Bella Lash to become, not like a position, but um, to become a certifying training instructor. And, but the thing is, is I thought I can't do it until I become a licensed instructor out here in the state of Tennessee. So I, Bella Lash would have still accepted me had I not checked into that, but I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I have to wait till I've been an esthetician for three years and then take an exam and get some extra hours to do that. So as soon as three years pops up, I'm going to do it. You guys, like I've been an esthetician for uh, a year and a half now and um, I don't know everything. I know a lot and I really, I do everything I can to get research and all that other kind of stuff. Every year I plan to take at least one, one lash extension class. So I don't care if I've been doing it for 10 years, I'm gonna have somebody else teach me. It doesn't mean all the other trainings I did were bad, it just means I want somebody else because everybody teaches differently. I want somebody else to show me how they do it as well. It's just, it's literally just about having different teachers and different ways of teaching. That's all it is. So I hope that kind of answers your question, but definitely do your research on these, you know, people coming out to teach you and stuff like that. Um, how do you keep your appointments organized? How much time do you give yourself between clients and services offered? I use Square Scheduler and that's how I book all of my appointments for full sets. I book out three hours. It, it rarely takes me three hours. It usually takes me about two hours, two and a half if I'm pushing it, like if it's super thick. But I like to allow that extra time, um, especially for like consultation and stuff like that. I like to make sure that we're on the same page. And um, also my back. I always allow myself at least like 30 minutes between clients while I try to, sometimes I can't. Just because my back, if y'all don't know, I got hurt in the military like super bad and I have permanent nerve damage and like I just found out there's a defect in my back from my surgery that I had. Y'all, I'm in pain 24 seven. So for me, I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> like if you wanna know the truth, I should not even be doing lashes or anything like that, but it makes me happy. It gives me a purpose. Um, I have my hella cut out because my card was full, but I have a purpose at home as a wife and as a mom, but I always have had to be the type of person that has, I, I have to make money, I have to work. And even though I could be a stay at home mom full time, I want to work. It makes me feel good about myself and it make it, it it's just a personal thing. Like I just like working. Um how to keep your books taxes in order for your business. So y'all, I am a Microsoft Office XL like queen. I mean, I don't know everything on there, but Google knows everything, so I can Google if I have a question. But <laughs> here's the thing. So I keep everything. I track my receipts, if I return something, if I give a free service, if um if I sell a product, the taxes, if I receive a check, I don't have to track um, cash on my spreadsheet because if I get paid in cash, I could just count it on my square document, not square documents, my square appointments. Any card or invoice or cash transactions, I can go ahead and just put that on there. Everything, because at the end of the year when I print out my report or even every 20th of the, of the month, I have to um, submit my sales tax stuff. So I just print out the report. So I literally keep track of everything. I have my bank statements printed out to where I can look and ensure that, hey, this did come out, this came out. I track everything. It is so important. And honestly, I can say that I am the, I don't want to say SHIT, I'm, saying, I'm the bomb when it comes to keeping track of that kind of stuff. I do really well doing it. Um, how to price point your services. Okay, so here's how I do it. You guys may disagree, but this is me. So obviously you're gonna look at you know everybody else and see what they're charging around the area, right? But then you're gonna take into 
um, the fact like, okay, so I have my own spa. They're going to be the only one in here. They're getting one-on-one. -on -one. They're not going to be bombarded. This is like, they have, I do a lot of extra stuff for my clients and I don't charge because of the extra stuff like that. What I'm charging for is my skill level, the amount of certifications that I have, because I'm always getting certified in something, as you guys know. Um, probably by the end of the year, I'll be, um, I'll have four certifications for lash extensions. So with that being said, I'm going above and beyond from what most lash artists in this area are doing. They're probably certified once, if that, because I know a lot of people are doing it that they're not supposed to be doing it. But if I'm getting more and more certs, of course I'm going to charge more because my skill is just getting better and better. Okay, so that's how I do it. That's one thing. Another thing is the amount that I spend on products. I don't get cheap products from Amazon. I don't get the cheapest. I get, in my opinion, the best. I'm always trying new things and stuff like that. So I take that into consideration, especially with waxing. Yesterday and I, I went and I bought two things of hard wax, like two bags. It was $78. So I'm not, I could have got something way cheaper than that, but I get the best. So that's how I price point my things. So that's how you should probably do it too, is take into consideration the amount that you're spending on products, what you're doing, your certification, your skill level, all of that. Um, common mistakes we can avoid when starting out or running our own business. This is something that I made a mistake on, is just thinking that everything has to be perfect when you open. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Like me, I have so much more decorating to do. I have like my certifications and stuff sitting here on this, on one of my couches in here. It's because I'm trying to find the right place to put it, okay? I want to find the right place. I don't want to put things up, take it down, spend money on cheap things and be like, ugh, I don't like that. So no, I have like a plan and I'm just going slow because what you don't want to do is have no money to spend on products. So I'm doing that and I'm just, I don't know, I could have this whole place decorated right now too, but I just wanna make sure it's the right look. So that, that's literally all I'm doing. Also, don't be afraid to spend money. I guess that's like to counteract that. Do not be afraid to spend money either. Know that this is your business and you are going to get it back. See like for example with me with uh, getting certified in lash extensions again and again. I know, yeah, it's gonna cost money, but I'm gonna make it right back because my skill level is going to improve and you know, it's, it's just awesome. I totally believe in spending money to make money, um, not all your money, but you have to invest in your business, but just don't go broke doing it, <laughs> okay? But those are pretty much all of my freaking advice. That's my advice for starting a business and all those other questions. I know it was kind of everywhere. This may be like a 12 minute video, so I'm just gonna put it all together if YouTube lets me, cause you know I'm not at that point where I can go about 15 minutes. But anyways, y'all, I hope you liked this video and thanks for your questions, girl. Like if y'all have any questions, I'm here to help. I'm here to motivate. My husband and I both own successful businesses. Both of us do, and we're both self-made. Nobody put money into us. We did it ourselves. Um, he's a contractor, he has a wheat contracting company, and I have my aesthetic spa business. We do not work for anybody but ourselves, and we absolutely love it. So if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and put them down in the comment box. And do not forget to subscribe, you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Just do it real quick. It takes a few seconds, probably like one. But you guys have a great day. Bye.